Hey everybody, welcome into this week's edition of the Top 5 from Tony Spot on Fishing. I'm your host, Tony Krizak. This week we're going to get you geared up for the inland trout season. Season just opened October 20th. It's one of our favorite things to do around Chicagoland. And here's what you need to be throwing to be more successful to catch those fall inland trout. First bait we're going to talk about is an inline spinner. Now there's so many on the market to choose from, but I have a personal favorite that I really love throwing and it's been very productive over the last couple years for me. It's actually from Blue Fox and it's the Blue Fox Flash Spinner. It weighs an eighth of an ounce. So it's got a little bit heavier weight to it than some of your traditional trout spinners. You know, a lot of times we throw 16th. Sometimes when we're throwing like a Panther Martin or something else and we go up to that eighth ounce, it's a bigger blade and sometimes starts getting to be a little too good of bait. That Blue Fox spinner though is a perfect size for them and you can get good casting distance out of it. That's why it's my personal favorite inline spinner for those fall inland trout. Now the next thing we're gonna talk about is a, a, a setup that's been around for quite a while and has been growing in popularity more and more every year more guys getting into it but a lot of guys just aren't really sure how to set this whole rig up and it's pretty easy to do it's a float and fly setup now what you want to do is run like a casting bubble the nice thing about the casting bubbles is if we need additional weight we can fill them up with some water and still be able to get the casting distance while keeping the buoyancy to keep the bobber up to be used as a strike indicator off of that, we run a leader line, usually four feet or so, uh, with the fly attached. Now, if we're not getting bites higher in the water column, because when we throw that out, we're going to actually twitch it or very slowly reel it back to us and just kind of make the fly dance behind that slip float, or behind the, the casting bubble, rather. Now, if we need to get that bait down a little bit, we could add a split shot to the line as well. That's always an option but it's a great presentation for those inland trout. To me, there's no more fun way than catching fish on a crankbait for the trout. And my personal favorite's from Rapala. The Rapala J7, it's a jointed bait, so you get extra added vibration, a little extra flash to the baits, heavy enough for casting distance, still small enough that the trout will hit them. A lot of guys see it and they're like, oh my gosh, Tone, normally we're used to talking the little rebel cranks or things like that. J7 just seems so big. You know, they've been stocking a lot better quality trout the last couple years now, bigger trout. No issues catching these fish on a jointed Rapala J7. And it's a lot easier to cast, especially if you have a little bit of windy conditions. You can still cast that bait and be productive. Now you can't do a, a trout top five without talking about the various trout baits on the market. Now we can run either the Berkeley Power Nuggets or the Paste. The choice is up to you. The way we set that up is we actually run it on a very small treble hook, like a number 10 treble hook. And if we have the actual dough ball itself, we can just form that around the treble hook. Or if you prefer the paste and just make your own little dough ball and put that on the treble hook, that works just as well. We can run it under a slip bobber. Of course, we will need to put a split shot on the line because the trout bait does float up. So we have to have some weight on there, otherwise we're just going to have a trout bait up on the surface. So a little bit of a split shot if we're running under a slip bobber. The other thing, of course, my favorite way to fish it is actually off the bottom. Uh, we can actually kind of set up a mini Carolina rig with a free sliding weight or just run a, a split shot, but a free sliding weight, swivel leader line of about maybe three, four feet or so, and let it float up off the bottom, very natural-like. Um, it's not a necessity to do it that way. Like I say, you could just run it with the split shot and be just fine off the bottom that way because that bait will float up. And of course, my favorite presentation is live bait. Now, some guys will prefer small minnows. Some guys will run a, a small ice jig with a wax worm. I'll tell you right now, day in and day out, the best producer for those inland trout is taking a night crawler, not running the full crawler, pinch it off about the halfway point, half a crawler on a hook, small bait holder hook or a small Aberdeen hook work just fine. The nice thing about the bait holders, they got those little barbs on the shank, help keep that night crawler up and in place for you when you're casting. Small split shot, about maybe foot, two feet above the hook. Run them anywhere from about four, three to six feet probably. Four has usually always been the magic number on those fish. And sometimes you're gonna have to give them a little time. You know, it's a half a crawler 
And as soon as that bobber goes down, don't necessarily reel down and set right away. Give them a few seconds, let them eat up on it, then set the hook and you'll catch them. All these presentations we talked about, light line, of course, uh, four and six pound tests, nothing over six pound, usually four is all you really need. Some of these forest preserve lakes that they're in, pretty clear water, like Blackwell, for example, Silver Lake in DuPage County, clear water, so the least visibility we can get, we'll go with. Even fluorocarbon is always an option to tie off fluorocarbon leaders. Uh, but light line, very line shy fish that we're dealing with, natural presentations when we're finessing them. So that is the key there. Light rods, medium light action to light action at you know the, the lightest. All you guys need to get set up to go catch these fish. A lot of trout around this year. DNR really up the numbers a little bit. Good quality size fish. And man, I think it's going to be a great inland trout season. Hey, what are some of your favorite baits for these inland trout? Let us know in the comments below. And of course, we invite you to check out the Amazon links that are going to be listed in the video description below where you can purchase all the products we talk about in our top fives and it actually helps support Spot On Fishing so we can continue week in and week out to keep bringing you all these great programmings. We appreciate all the support. We thank you guys. And that's about it for this top five. Once again, my name is Tony Creason. We'll see you next time on Tony's Spot On Fishing.